No. What do you mean, no? There's a cover that's finite. But that's not the definition. OK, so this is a, this is a huge, uh, a huge um, caution. A lot of times when people learn this definition, they think that the definition is saying that a set is compact if there is a finite cover. That's not what this definition is saying. OK, so let me just say warning. We are not saying, uh, this definition is not saying uh, there's a finite cover. That's not what we're saying. It's clearly not what we're saying because every set has a finite cover. Just take the whole metric space. Isn't that an open set? Yes? That will cover everything. So this is what we're not saying. Not saying this. OK, good. Uh, one half one is uh, not compact because there is an open cover with, a, with no finite subcover. Which one? The VNs. OK, so example one half one is not compact. And I'm going to abbreviate compact by CPT. And this is witnessed by the fact that the VNs, um, see the VNs. Maybe that's just what I'll say. Happy? What else do we know is not compact? Uh, let's do another example. How about um, Z? I claim Z in R. The subset of the consisting of the integers I claim is not compact. Can you see why? Let's see. Here's the set, Z. <coughs> yes? I claim it's not compact, which means show me a open cover. Don't start with subcover, please. Don't. OK. Show me a open cover that has a, or that, that does not have a finite subcover. Can you think of an open cover of Z by open sets, open intervals, that clearly has no finite subcover? 1 to n? Yeah, so you, you, you might even, you're taking concentric open balls. I'll, I'll do something that may be even more obvious that you can't find a finite subcover. How about covering every integer point by a little interval around it? Can you argue why this has no finite subcover? Good. If you take any one away, you can't even remove one without it without destroying its covering property, right? Because you take this one away, that integer won't be covered. With me? Okay. So Z A and R is not compact. Uh, what about the closed interval 0, 1? Well, let's see. This particular open set, uh, sorry, this particular cover open cover has a, does it have a finite subcover? Yes. OK. Does that mean it's compact? <laughs> Not necessarily, because I need to show that every open cover has a finite subcover. So 0, 1 may be compact. We don't know that yet. OK, but I, I want to let you, if you don't know the answer, puzzle over whether this is true. 0, 1 may be compact, but I would need to check every open cover. Oh my gosh, that, there could be a lot of those, right? Uh, or prove a theorem. <laughs> OK, so that's what we're going to do later. OK. All right. Um, hmm. Let's see. What else? By the way, notice with one, one half one, it's not compact because there is an open cover with no finite subcover.
But that doesn't mean that there couldn't be some open covers with a finite subcover, like the Ws. With me? You know, so this is just to show something not compact. It's, it's generally a lot easier. You just have to exhibit an open cover with no finite subcover. OK, so here's a question. We said something about open sets. Uh, sorry, we said something about uh, uh, compact sets being somehow the next best thing to being finite. Yeah? OK, so it sure would be nice if finite sets were compact. Are finite sets compact? Yes? So theorem, finite sets are, in fact, compact. Let's see. You can give me an argument. I know you can. This is actually an example where you can show every open cover has a finite subcover. Proof. Let's suppose you have an open cover. Consider, a way of saying look at, uh, some open cover. This is an arbitrary open cover, so uh, G sub alpha. So let's see, I'm going to draw a picture here. It's probably the easiest. Here's a picture. And uh, here are some open sets that cover this finite set. How about this one? How about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? And maybe there's like, you know, concentric circles here, and there's lots of them, maybe infinitely many. And maybe there's lots that cover a particular point. Can somebody give me an argument why a compact set, sorry, why a finite set, uh, every op this open cover has a finite subcover? Can you think of finite subcover? Yes. Excellent. Yeah, so uh, every point is in, could be in lots of sets, but just pick one. And when you pick one, you can pick one for this, pick one for this, pick one for this, pick one for this, and pick one for this. Would you agree it's now covered? So that is a finite subcover. So how would we write that? Let's be uh, careful. So consider open cover G alpha. Uh, let's say it cover uh, covering our finite set x1 through x sub n. So uh, what should I say? I think we, what we want to say, take, take one for each of these, take one uh, g, sub a, uh, g sub alpha. So for all x sub i, choose, I don't care which one, just choose one, g sub alpha. And now, of course, to show that this is a specific alpha, I'm going to say g sub alpha sub i. So this is, uh, I'm taking a subscript to say I'm picking a, something for the original collection. Choose one g sub alpha sub i from the collection that covers, um, that contains x, x sub i. And this is the same index. And now the claim is then, OK, now you'll see that the advantage of this notation now. Then I can refer to the g sub alpha sub i, the ith index. And now the i's just go from 1 to big N. Cover covers the set. Done. OK? Everybody happy with that? Pretty nice, right? Finite sets are, in fact, compact. Ah, OK. Very, very good. What else is compact? Well, we're, we're going to have to prove some theorems to figure out what else is compact. Um, let's, uh, let's see, what, let's see what, what we can say about compact sets, if we can prove some things. Might give us some intuition for what compact sets look like. We really have no intuition yet. So here's a theorem. 